Welcome to It's a Mystery, where we take you into the world of the unknown. We'd like you to come with us on this mysterious journey. Do you know how to improve your mind? We attempt to unravel the mysteries of memory. We uncover the mysteries hidden deep inside an old attic. This one will baffle you. And what will your family look like in the future? You'd be surprised. It's a mystery. What strange things people keep in their attic. Do you have an attic or loft at home? And if so, do you know what's in it? Well, no attic has stranger secrets than this one. Now, at first, it looks like any ordinary attic. It's old, it's dark, <coughs> and it's very dusty. But things aren't quite what they seem. There are some very strange things in this attic. For a start, there's a huge set of very old-fashioned scales here, with what looks like the remains of some herbs and spices. And here's a mortar and pestle, obviously for grinding the herbs. But look what's down here. Leeches. Weird kitchen? Maybe. Although, these don't look anything like kitchen utensils. Look at this. Never seen anything like that in my kitchen. And what about these? A couple of pair of really weird scissors. There's a couple of boxes of strange implements over here. That looks like some sort of scoop or gouge. And look at this. It's sort of a very weird drill. So could this be a woodwork room or some sort of do-it-yourself attic? Well, it's a lot lighter in this part of the attic. But you know, it looks like some sort of auditorium for some kind of audience. In fact, there's another clue. An antique table with a very strange headboard at one end. And you know, this table isn't in very good condition. Look at these red stains all over it. And what about these gouge marks in the wood? Gouges made by this set of saws. And look what's under the table. A tray of sawdust. You know, maybe there was a woodwork masterclass here. So, this attic contains all of these bizarre things. But what are they for? And why are they in an attic? Well, let's just recap on the clues. There's the herbs, the leeches, those implements, and this very weird room. Any ideas? Well, just to baffle you even more, the attic is in the top of this church. So, could it be that this attic was used to hold special woodwork masterclasses? Was the attic used by chefs to concoct recipes from a bygone age? Or was it a secret location for more sinister goings on? What do you think? The answer is quite simple. Over 200 years ago, this church was connected to a hospital. The hospital was short of room, so they built an extra operating theatre in the attic of the church. Now, when the hospital was moved, they sealed up the operating theatre and it was forgotten about for nearly 100 years until it was rediscovered in the 1950s when someone broke in. In fact, this attic is the oldest operating theatre in Britain. The operations were performed here on this very table in front of a crowd who was stood in the auditorium. The saw marks on the table are real and they were made during the operations. In fact, there were up to 200 amputations every day. Not one of them took more than a minute and the record for a leg amputation was 27 seconds. And just think about this. All of these operations were performed before the invention of modern painkillers. Ouch. 
The box under the table was to soak up most of the blood running off the table. In fact, there was three inches of sawdust underneath the floorboards to stop the blood trickling onto the heads of the church congregation below. So that's it, the oldest hospital operating theatre in Britain. We've solved the mystery of what's in this attic. Do you know what's in yours? It's a mystery how you can improve your memory. Of all the amazing functions of the human brain, that of memory is the hardest to understand. Sometimes we remember things really clearly, and at other times we forget straight away. Now, amazingly, a young child learns new words at an average of 10 a day. And by the time they've grown up, they know 100,000 words. That's all the words in this book. Short-term memory is our simplest store, and it's where things are remembered first. It can hold about seven unrelated facts at one time. We also have long-term memory, which is seemingly limitless. If something's important enough, it'll make the move from the short term to the long term memory. Well, this is Tom Morton, and Tom has such an amazing memory. He's going to be going for the British record for memorising a long sequence of numbers. So we're going to put his memory to the test. Tom, if you'd like to come this way, we've got a number of objects here which are going to pass before your eyes. I'm going to read them off at the same time. And what I want you to do is to remember the objects in the right order. Right, let's try. OK. Ready? And maybe you could try this at home. A cockerel. A garden gnome. A 15-cup teapot. Some large carrots. A DC-9 Super 80 aeroplane. Pink inflatable lips. A wooden clog. Porcelain vase with cat detail. Plastic lobster. A cuddly toy. A school bell. A cheeseburger. A piggy bank. A gold watch. And a plastic plant. OK, Tom? I'll check them off here, so take it away. First of all, the first object was the, was the plastic cockerel. Then the second object was the little garden with the wee red fish in it. Then we had the, the, I think it was a big teapot. And I think you could, it was enough for 15 cups, that, the big, big silver teapot for the gas ring. Then we had the, the, the four carrots with the grass, st the, the, the green stems on the end. The, uh, we had the, the model airplane on this in the plastic splint. It was a, a DC-9 Super 80 airplane, Douglas. And then we had uh, the, the plastic uh, inflatable lips. Then we had, um, what about the, the big clog? I think it was a big wooden clog with the writing on the side. Then we had uh, the, the big vase. And on the vase was two cats, two, two, two cat detail. The, um, we had a big uh, lobster, big, uh, big plastic lobster. Then we had the cuddly toy. We had uh, the big bell, the big brass school bell. They were uh, the, uh, the, the plastic cheeseburger, we had um, the, the little piggy bank for the money and we had uh, the, the, the watch, I think it says 9.25 and then we had the, what was the last one, the big, big, big object, the big plant, plastic pot plant. Wow Tom, that is amazing. Not only did you get everything right in the right order, but you also got the time on the watch. I mean, that's Thank brilliant. You. It's incredible, isn't it? Yeah. I got five. <laughs> in fact, Tom's memory is so incredible that he can remember a list of more than 20,000 numbers all in the right order. They're written down on this strip of paper which stretches over a quarter of a mile long. Now, I think we've proved you've got a fantastic memory. Is it easy? Memory is easy provided you use a system to organise your thinking. It's based on the idea of association. And the most important thing about association is use your imagination and create feelings and images. Try it at home, it's, it works. Should we try it here and yeah, now? Yeah, why not? All right, let's think of some objects then. Um, a policeman. Roller coaster. Uh, plate of fish and chips. Um, a washing line. Uh, a computer screen. Um, oh, a haunted castle. And a newspaper. Right, there's seven objects. If we could do what we said a minute ago, just relate them to each other. First of all, we're going to relate, we've got the... Uh, Roller, we've got a policeman, he gets on the, the roller coaster. The policeman's on the roller coaster, he pulls off his hat, he eats fish and chips, okay? He's very, very sweaty, because he's, he's, he's scared on the roller coaster, so he takes his shirt off, he hangs it on a washing line at the back of the 
the, the roller coaster, goes down the hill, at the bottom of the hill he crashes into a big computer screen. On the computer screen they're playing Haunted Castles, and everybody in the Haunted Castle is reading the newspaper. I've, I've got a really clear I picture. I can see the picture in my head. Okay, let's try it. Okay. Um, start with the policeman. Uh, eating... Oh no, on the roller coaster first. Yeah. Yeah. He's eating fish and chips yeah. out of his hat. Yeah. He goes down. He goes gets sweaty. Down, takes sweaty. his shirt off. Yeah. Puts it on the washing, the washing line. line. That's right. Mm. He goes down the dip, crashes through um, a computer, computer screen. screen, and on the computer They're screen. They're playing haunted castles. Yeah, and everybody's reading, reading the newspaper. newspaper. It works. That's Spot fantastic. On. Thanks very much, Tom. <laughs> I never thought I'd be able to do that. Did you remember them all? Well, that's how you can improve your memory. Just think in pictures and tell a story. It's so clever. That. Hello, I'm Dan Donnelly from Smuggler's Adventure in Hastings. I'd like to tell you a little story about a joke which backfired. This was a ghost story which took place in the caves just underneath my feet. On that particular Halloween night, a young man came to the caves to visit and asked the staff if he could stop overnight to raise money for charity. Everyone thought it was a brave idea because these dark caves are haunted. Well. The night of Halloween came, and the man settled down beside one of the exhibits, a laughing, cackling skeleton. What the man didn't know was the staff were going to play a practical joke. They had set the timer to come on at 2 a.m., and the skeleton would start up with a shriek. <laughs> Unfortunately, the joke backfired badly. When the staff opened the door, the man was badly frightened, looked terrible, as if he'd been awake all night. Not only did he hear the skeleton go off at 2 a.m., but he also heard other noises all night long, screaming, horrible screeching noises. The staff had nothing to do with these noises. So where had they come from? I can't explain what happened that night. All I know, it had nothing to do with the staff and their practical joke. What do you think? Why did the practical joke backfire? What caused all those mysterious extra screeches and screams that terrified the man so much? Well, we found on closer investigation that hundreds of years ago, the ancient caves and winding passages used to be used as a hospital for wounded soldiers, and before that, as a secret hiding place for smugglers to stash their goods. Some people say that the ghosts of these men still haunt the caves. Could this have been what scared the man so much? Are the caves really haunted? What do you think? I used to think all these ghost stories were made up, but now I've changed my mind. Could it have been the sound of the ghosts? <laughs> It's a mystery to me why a spider doesn't get stuck in its own web. I mean, when you see a spider's web, there's always a lot of little bugs and flies caught in the sticky threads, aren't there? The spider's web is an amazing feat of nature's engineering. And if we humans could make one, the web would be as sticky as syrup. It would be as strong as steel. As stretchy as elastic. And, of course, it would be as fine as hair. And when you look at a spider spinning its web, it's a real mystery why it doesn't get caught up in it, along with its prey. Well, it's all to do with sticky and non-sticky silk. The basic structure of the web, which the spider spins first, is made from non-sticky silk. This is made inside the spider and comes out near its bottom. It comes out in liquid form, but when it makes contact with the air, it gets harder. A bit like this spray string. It's liquid inside the can, or inside the spider, but when it squirts out and makes contact with air, it hardens. Once it's made the basic shape, the spider starts from the middle of the web and makes wide, temporary spirals, again out of non-sticky silk. This strengthens the basic structure of the web. 
Now, when the spider has made these non-sticky parts of the web, it then starts to produce silk, which amazingly is sticky. It starts from the outside, spinning tighter sticky spirals all the way to the middle to complete the web. When it's finished, the spider then knows which bits of its web are sticky and which bits are not, and so knows to walk around on the non-sticky bits. So that's why a spider doesn't get caught in its own web. <laughs> it's a mystery what we'll look like in the future. Well, you and I will probably look something like this. Oh, no. <laughs> but what will humans look like in, say, a million years' time? Will we look any different? Well, let's study the evidence. Now, three or four million years ago, our ancient ancestors would have had much hairier legs and their big toe would have stuck out a bit like the thumb on your hand. And ancient man would have had much shorter legs but longer arms that reached his knees. And look at this face. There he is. He had a much smaller brain with a massive sticking out jaw to help chew all that rough and tough food. Now, just look at how we've changed. Today, we have toes which come together for walking, not climbing. We've lost virtually all our body hair and our arms have got much shorter. And we've got larger brains, flatter faces and a smaller mouth designed for talking and for eating a softer diet. But the real mystery is, what are we going to look like in the future? Well, let's start with the toes. Now, although all of our toes are still useful for balance, they're less important than they used to be. In fact, it has been suggested that in the future, nature might do away with our little toe altogether. What about our bodies? Well, over the years, our skeleton has been getting lighter to suit our lazy lifestyle. Now, you've seen how our jaws have shrunk as our diet has changed. Well, what about this? Open wide. Our mouths are no longer big enough to hold all of our teeth. That's why we have problems when our four wisdom teeth try to come through. There's no room left. And in the future, we'll probably lose our wisdom teeth and just make do with the other 28 teeth. Also, over millions of years, our faces have become flatter and our heads narrower and taller as our brains have changed shape. It might be that our brains get bigger and our heads get taller and our mouths get smaller. So, OK, what will we look like in the future? Well, future members of your family may look like pear-shaped dwarves <laughs> with four feeble toes and bug eyes. Or maybe your family will look like... This! More of a pot-bellied stick man with stumpy arms and pointy ears. Or maybe we'll just stay pretty much the same as we are. What do you think? Well, there we are. Some of the world's mysteries we've solved, yet some remain unsolved. Join us next time when we delve into some more. But here's one last mystery for you to solve. A gentleman in a Rolls Royce parks right outside a hotel on Park Lane. He immediately knew he was bankrupt. How did he know? Can you solve the mystery? We'll reveal the answer next time. Last week's final mystery was where should a lady build a house if she wants all the windows on all of the sides to face south? The answer is on the North Pole.